So, if you watched last week's video, you know that I picked up a GoPro Hero 10. And in today's video, we're gonna take a little look just to see if this small and mighty little camera that GoPro are offering is really worth picking up and is it worth something that you should maybe consider buying. So first off, I'm not a action cam guru. Uh, the first GoPro I picked up was a GoPro Hero 4 and I mainly used it for time lapses. I would say that's probably the predominant use that I've used this little thing for. Um, I picked it up on a trip to Iceland when I was going to there for no reason in particular, just to see Iceland back in about 2016. And I wanted something small that could get me some pretty decent video quality for the time and even snap some photographs while I was over there. So alas, 2022 came, I started going out a bit more and all my gear had seen substantial improvements. I'm getting bigger lenses, heavier, well, when I say bigger, heavier lenses. <laughs> and in the mix of it all, my poor little GoPro Hero 4, unfortunately just got lost just fell out of my rotation of gear and there was no reason for me to be carrying it around. It just wasn't substantially good enough to keep up with the rest of the equipment that I'm using. So enter Sarah. So she arrives up to Donegal a few weeks ago. I'm sure you've seen the video. I'll link it up above. Boom, she's got a GoPro Hero 10. She actually ordered two backs and I don't tell anybody that. <laughs> and not six months ago before this, I was sitting telling Sarah, I was like, oh, I'm never gonna buy a GoPro again. I don't see any space for them in my gear. So I bought one. So why need another camera, might you ask? So the GoPro Air 4 was old as balls, didn't shoot 4K, well, it shot 4K 15 frames a sec. Um, and the benefits that six years of technological improvement and getting bigger um, has brought, you know, four, you've got 4K 120 frames a second, so however many times faster you can add into that, as well as being able to shoot 5.3K at 60 frames a second thought, you know what, I could definitely find a use for this camera in my setup. With all those huge advancements, I thought, hey, could this replace my vlogging setup? My bulky ass Canon with my wide angle lens and my dead cat stuck to the top of that bloody camera. Not inconspicuous at all, but something like this with the media mod attached, maybe a road video mic attached to the top of it. Could that replace my vlog setup viably? So we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna take it to carry this week. I'm gonna only use this primarily as my vlogging camera. Not only I will be using my Sony to film B-roll and the drone and stuff, but as my main shooter for my vlogs and for any sort of stuff, this is what we're gonna be using. And we're gonna test it out and see if I could replace my Canon with this thing. So welcome to this vlog on my GoPro. Um, I thought I would give it a shot, see if it was a, a way of being able to um, vlog without having to carry a huge ass camera around. Other than maybe one or two little things, it's actually working out pretty well. Uh, I've just stopped to stretch my legs because I've been driving since 4.45 this morning and it's now 9.20. So. <laughs> Um, I was well overdue a break, so I'm just going to get some coffee from like uh, the tree bark in my Cullen where I used to live. I have to collect some post from my old place as well. And um, I just thought I'd stretch the legs before I get my coffee and go on the remainder of my drive to Kerry. So let's crack on. We are in Kerry. This is where I always stop when we get into Kerry because you've got this amazing viewpoint. Uh, Sarah's gone to Kidmare, so we're just going to head straight into Killarney through K through Killarney National Park and out to Kidmare. But this viewpoint, every time I come in, I just have to stop. I have like one of my favorite photos I've taken of my mini and Sarah I took right here where she's standing up taking a photo and I've got like the mini and the mountain in the background. It's cool as shit, but let's keep going. GoPro vlog. Oh, so Let's see what it's like. Yeah. 
So, um, I've arrived in Kerry and we've picked Sarah up. We've left her car in Kenmare and we're actually on the Bera Peninsula. And we're heading out to our Airbnb now at the minute. It's like a little lodge thing. I don't know what it is, Sarah knows all the gypsy details. A gypsy, a gypsy caravan, caravan thingy. Um, and Sarah just wanted to stop to send the drone up for a bit. So. So, it's morning time, I'm awake, Sarah's awake, and we just got brought our breakfast. Some eggs, some yogurt, I think it's coffee. So, it was a pretty blustery night, but um, it was quite fine in here. It sounds a lot worse than it actually is outside. But what we're going to do today is we're going to go for a few hikes. Um, we had some recommended to us, some that we drove past actually, that I was like, oh, I'd like to do that. And then we got a recommended to us. So get fuel and then we're gonna go and check out um, the Stone Circle hike somewhere in the Barra Peninsula. There's loads apparently, but there's one in particular we're gonna take a look at goes through the forest because the weather isn't great today. Um, so I'm just gonna pack up my gear, Sarah's off brushing her teeth, and let's crack on with today, I suppose. <laughs> Um, we are on the Cashel Kilty Stone Circle loop. Yeah, it's not a loop. Loop. Oh, it's just a trail. <laughs> and we're going up here. Then we get back, we'll take a break. And then there's another loop called the Doreen Loop as well that we're going to take a little walk through. But the woods are just lovely. It's a, it's a really nice setting. And then as well as that, the weather's supposed to be a bit shitty, but it's really nice and shaded in here. You can hear the wind along the tops of the trees. But we're fine and safe and dandy in the bottom here, aren't we? <laughs> Sarah found her limbo tree. Good, I was really sleepy, but now that we're outside in the fresh air, I feel invigorated. Invigorated. I want to try talking and sound. Although we know the audio on this is going to be absolutely shit. But we'll just give you a taster to see the wind uh, pattern on this. But So, hope you guys enjoyed the wind test there on that. Um, but the views from just beyond the stone circle were so much better. You could see over the whole of Kenmare Bay. Um, and right out to the Atlantic Ocean as well as across to the, the Ring of Kerry from uh, the Barra Peninsula. So it was probably go back again on a day that it's not as windy that I could spend a little bit more time up there um, and as well as that when I was coming down I forgot to pack my tripod so I can't set anything up <laughs> so everything has to be handheld. Kerry 100% let's uh let's do some b-roll shit. We're in uh, the Healy Pass. It's like moody as balls right now as well. The, the clouds, as you can see from right up here, are just scattering across the top of the mountains. It's not raining. It was not, the wind was calm enough so that I could send the drone up as well. So highly recommended for a little drive, but for now we're gonna crack on. So this is what I loved about the camera. As I said, it was fairly obvious even before I took it to carry, it was the bloody Hyper Smooth on it. Hyper Smooth 4.0 is just amazing. And then when you pair that with the super high frame rates at 2.7K, you just get this buttery smooth footage that just looks amazing. And you get shots that you never thought you could get with a on a camera so small. Not slow-mo guys quality, but <laughs> slow ass footage 
really smooth. I've got this amazing footage of Jack where he runs from the floor to the coffee table up onto his little perch in the living room, followed him up behind and it's all handheld like this going along and it's smooth as balls. <laughs> That's all I can say is it looks like I was using a gimbal. It's amazing. And clearly one of the main convenient parts about this thing is tiny. It's very well it's bigger than the GoPro here for, but when I'm coming from like my Canon 77D trying to downsize to something like this, it's really small, it's pocketable. I can just pop it in a pocket and I don't need to worry about it. So with the highs, there's always gonna be some lows. The size of the camera and the convenience that you get, you've always gotta make compromise with these things. So, so the first big no for me is I only bought one battery and I feel like this camera lived on my battery bank. It eats batteries, man. It eats them so much. So there are circumstances where it doesn't go through them quite as fast, but definitely if you're buying one, I'd buy at least another battery with it. Not a deal breaker for me, but I can understand for a lot of people that would be a real headache. Secondly, another downside to this camera maybe would be low light. And I didn't expect good low light out of it, to be honest, but it just absolutely falls apart as soon as you take it out of daylight. Um, it just isn't able to keep up. The sensor is just too small to allow enough light in to give you a good image at, at that time. So whilst night lapse modes are amazing and, and they work really well when you've set it up for like a nice night time lapse, the low light capabilities on this aren't great. And for me, you know, coming from something like an A7 III and even the Canon 70-70, D, like the low light's fine on that, it's not amazing, but I can work with it and I can deal with it. I can deal with the noise a lot easier, whereas everything seems to fall apart on the on the GoPro, so it's not something I'd be using in the dark or I would be getting a, an assistant light with it, which with the media mod, I can just attach on using the, the cold shoes on there. So can this replace my Canon? Yes and no. There's circumstances where I will use this as my primary setup. Like if I'm going out on a day that's like perfectly lit and I know I need something small and I'm going on a hike, that to me it seems like the perfect sort of situation for it. Um, but whenever it comes to anything low light, I probably will stick with my Canon. Even though it's not the best, it's better. That said, I think it is a viable replacement for a vlogging setup. As well as that, it is it is a decent photo taker here. There are some shots that I was happy with that came out of the camera, you know? So lastly, would you use a GoPro as your primary camera? Or do you use a GoPro as your primary camera? If not, what would you recommend? I'd love to hear that below so that I can maybe, you know, look into those options. Um, as well as that, you know, if you did like the video, please give it a little like. Subscribe if you want to see more. Yeah, follow my Instagram, that down below you'll have seen all the stuff that I've been doing with this GoPro. Uh, and as well as that, you know what, I'm probably going to use this thing a lot more. Um, it, it does seem like a viable option and I will probably let you guys know if I do make the full switch to it from my Canon, if I, you know, make some workarounds or there's some updates that make the camera work a little bit better.